here is Pastor Roby. Hello, welcome to Bible Suffering, the first in the new year 2022. How you doing? How have you been? Have you started work? If you have, how was work yesterday and today? If you've not, how are you preparing? Are you looking forward to going back to work at all when you do probably next week? Great, great. We are fine here in the UK. God has been great. God has been awesome. I'm excited about this new year. And I'm hoping that you as well, that you are also excited about this new year. God is set to do a lot of things this year. Brace up for expansion. Brace up for increase because God is bringing them all to you, your household, your career, your business, your relationships this year year 2022 hallelujah you know i on sunday if you joined us for service and if you didn't if you didn't go now okay not now after service please please go to our youtube channel activate church UK. excuse me activate church uk go on facebook activate church uk go to our website www.activatechurch dot uk and catch up <laughs> catch up with sunday service message the message was awesome oh my god you need to listen to it and um <laughs> as it is usually i found out after preaching i went through my notes and i found out i only covered one sixth one over six of my notes so that means we are left with five over six <laughs> the fifth of a six and um, we are trusting the holy spirit that we can cram it in today hallelujah sweet holy spirit i call on you you are the master of time you are the teacher as well i ask that you grant me all trance let your word come simple let it minister to the hearts of the hearers. Let it cause change. Let it infuse faith and confidence in them. Especially this year. We need faith to expand. We need faith to increase. So Lord, I ask for faith, faith, faith. Let there be a tremendous manifestation of faith into this service. And let your word permeate our hearts and mind in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, I'm talking to you about growth, uh, but we're looking at it from the perspective of friends. And um, hopefully on Sunday, we will delve into growth fully. And we're going to discuss growth because if the Lord has given us the word that we will expand and increase this year, wisdom, wisdom, it takes to us that we should prepare for it. So I'm going to prepare you for growth. Don't miss Sunday service. But yes, the last, last Sunday, we looked at growth and we said that one of the fallouts of growth is that you will notice you start losing friends. And I <laughs> let you know that it is normal. As you grow in life, as you increase, as you expand, you naturally drop weights. Hallelujah. You naturally lose friends. So it is not strange. It's not something you should go rolling over on your bed or on the floor crying. Oh, I've lost this friend. This guy doesn't call me anymore. Oh, how we used to be. We're no longer like that. Oh, what is going on? Relax. It is part of life. Relax. And I showed you a scripture that I said, I have never seen the first half of that scripture like this before. In Proverbs 18 verse 24. But the Bible says, a man of many companions may come to ruin. So having too much friends might ruin you, might destroy you, might bring you down. For a lot of people that is listening to this message, the reason why you've not succeeded, the reason why you've not gotten to the height you are meant to be is because you have baggage. And that baggage are friends. You need to drop some dead weight. A man of many friends, a man that has many friends, a man of many companions may come to ruin. And I spoke to you about Joseph, how he transitioned. I spoke to you about Jephthah, 
I also transition. At times, these friends we are talking about could be family. You may lose your family. You may lose the closeness you used to have with your family. Things might not be the way you used to be when you were growing up. Relax. 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 It is well with you. You know, then we looked at Jesus briefly. Do you know Jesus? As he was about to step into his purpose, the major reason why he came here on earth, what happened? When the process started at the Garden of Gethsemane, the disciples that I think a few days before, probably at the upper room, while he was praying for them, he called them friends. He said, see, you are no longer servants. You are now my friend. Yet, despite this graduation, this elevation of this man from servants to friends of our Lord Jesus Christ, when the soldiers came in the Garden of Gethsemane, what happened? They ran. They abandoned their master. They abandoned their friend. They ran. Jesus at his Kairos moment lost his friends. That is why when I start listing out some of the reasons why we lose friends, you find out that one of the reasons is that when you start chasing your purpose, some of your friends will not understand it. Some of your friends will <laughs> somehow, somehow, you notice that mm, the conversations you used to have is not flowing as you used to because you are speaking from, well, I say, the level, from the dimension, from a different perspective than you used to speak before, than you guys used to talk about before. They just can't grasp it. Now, when you study Jesus and his disciples, he kept on saying this to them. Why can't you guys just get it? Don't you guys get it? You guys don't understand what is going on. Throughout, say, you guys just have faith. He, he, <laughs> he spoke to them about his coming and all that. He got their boy say, you guys don't grasp it. He, he, there's another one I want to show you. He was, um, hallelujah. He was talking to them. And I'll still show that to you. Uh, the two disciples on the, okay, let me just mention it. We'll read it when we get there. The two disciples on the way to Emmaus. He said, still, you guys can't get it. You guys still cannot understand what the prophets are saying. They just can't get it. They can't get where you're coming from. You're talking about this vision, this goal you set, this height you want to get to, this mountain, this challenge you want to knock down. You're talking big. They just can't get it. So because of that, you notice that there's a strain in your relationship. Don't go bemoaning the friction you have between you and your friends. It is probably for good. Then we looked at David and I promise you today that we're going to sit on David. David lost his friendship, his covenant friend, with the king's son. He found himself in the wilderness. He ran to the cave, Abdullam. Something happened in that cave. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 22, 1 and 2, that men found him in that cave. And the Bible listed the kind of men that came to that cave. The Bible says that the discontented, the ones in distress, the ones in debt they could not pay, gathered themselves unto him. And he became captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. And if you listen to Sunday's message, I described that whole scenario. I won't be able to do that now. So please go listen. You need to listen to it. It's a big, it's a serious, it's a, it's a, it's a, it forms the foundation of today's message. So please go to our podcast if you can watch and listen to it. He lost Jonathan. He gained 400 men. And I said on Sunday that Jonathan was irrelevant to where he was going. Remember, a few years before now, he has been anointed king. 
Jonathan will not add any. In fact, Jonathan will be an opposition to his fight and struggle for kingship because Jonathan has a genuine claim to the throne. Hallelujah. So, if he had held on to Jonathan because he was his bosom friend, covenant friend, and be mourned, oh, bless Jonathan, oh, I have to run from his father wants to kill me, oh, he would not have been able to get 400 men that were vital to where he is going. Oh, oh, oh. May God grant you insight, perception, to identify those that you need, not for where you are coming from, but for where you are going to. Oh. These are the men that stood by him. I said, the 37 men that were listed in the Bible. And they came to him. Yeah. And the Bible says something. The scripture I want to read for you. A profound scripture. In Psalm 88 verse 18. I'm reading from the New King James Version. The Bible says, Loved one and friend you have put far from me. Loved one and friend you have put far from me. At times, when you are being separated from that friendship, God has a hand in it. You didn't hear me. Maybe those here will hear me. <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> at times, when you are separated from that, your friend, at times, even your family, God has a hand in it. I should read this again. Loved one and friend you have put far from me loved one and friend you have put far from me because those loved ones and those your friends might just be a distraction to where god is taking you to because those loved ones and your friends might just be a hindrance that will stop you from achieving those things God has sent you here to achieve. So God comes and breaks that separation. So at times when you lose friends, it is for good. And now when you read 2 Samuel chapter 23, there was a roll call of David's mighty men. There are 37 of them. There are 32 regular ones. And amongst those 32, was Uriah, the husband to Bathsheba. Then there were five. Amongst that five, there were two classes of threes. The first three and the second three, then the 32. But incidentally, in the second three, they only mentioned two people. So that's why you have three, two, 32, making 37 mighty men. I'm going to start from the first three. At the top, at the chief of the chiefs, his name in Samuel was called the Takmonite. When people don't address you by your, but they usually call it government name, by your given name, they address you by either your clan, your village, your state, or your country. You, you should know now that you are a man of renown. When they say Pastor Chukudum, the Nigerian, hey, that is influence. Hallelujah. And the Bible says something about this guy. The Bible says that his name was Adina the Esnite. Though in First Chronicles, when they also given the roll call of the mighty men, he was called Jashoboam. The Bible says something about this guy. He said he lifted up his Pair against eight hundred, whom he slew at one time. Eight hundred men. One man 
did not use spear. He used, you know, use sword. He used a spear. At least a sword is a bit versatile, but a spear against 800 people. One man. <laughs> that is a mighty man. Mighty man. Listen to me. In the year 2022, God will send people, organizations to you that will ensure that whatever plan, purpose, desire that you have will be achieved in the name of Jesus. I didn't hear you. Amen. <laughs> God will send you a mighty man. God will send you a mighty woman in this year 2022 that will not only fulfill the counsel of the Lord, but will overachieve in his fulfillment. If you believe that, shout a big amen. God will send you people that will not be self preservative about themselves. They will not be selfish. They will carry your matter on their head until they see it come to pass. If you believe that shot a big amen, that is who this guy is. The second mighty man is Eliezer, son of Dodo. I call him Dodo. <laughs> son of Dodo. The Ahotite. He was one of the mighty men. The Bible says, that they defied the Philistines that were gathered together to battle. And the men of Israel were gone away. He stood on behalf of a nation. One man and fought a group of enemy soldiers. Listen, the Bible says he arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand, listen, listen, and his hand clave unto the sword, and the Lord wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned only after him. When the two soldiers ran, when from afar they saw that one man defeated the garrison, by the time he was done, they now came back. We are ready to explain this. But that he saw cleave to his hands. You know what that means? That means his sword got so hot, so hot that it burnt through his flesh and they now cleaved together. How did his sword get hot? His sword got hot probably two ways. Either his body temperature increased so much so that he had burnt through his hands and burnt the sword but I believe that the sword got so hot from the clanging together of metals in warfare. As they will fight and hit the, the sword together or against the shield or against the spear, it is releasing energy. That clanging was in releasing energy that was warming up the sword. The heat traveled from the tip of the blade down to the handle that he burnt into his skin to tell you how, <laughs> oh, to tell how, how he fought. He fought with so much fury. He fought with so much fervency. Why? He's a vagabond, a societal reject, but he stood for the nation. Listen to me. In this year, 2022, God will send men, women, organizations, institutions, charities, whatever name you want to call it, that will stand for you, that will fight your battles for you. When they have finished fighting the battles, <laughs> you will come out from your resting place to collect the spoil. <laughs> if you believe that, shout a big amen. <laughs> you didn't hear me. In this year, 2022, you'll be a spoil collector. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Huh. Prepare for growth. 
Brace for expansion. Prepare for increase. It is your portion in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The next, the, the last of the first three, the Bible says his name is Oh Shashama, son of Agi. Then the Philistines again came in a place full of lentils and the people ran from the Philistines. But one man stood. I would say he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines and the Lord wrought a great victory that day. In this year, 2022, God will send to you dependable and faithful men. When others abandon you, when friends discard you, when they leave you, these faithful men will stand with you. When the disciples of Jesus ran, some watched from afar, God sent Simon the Cyrene to help him carry the, 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 the cross. God sent Joseph Arimathea to go talk to Pilate to give him, give him Jesus' body. God will send men to you this year. God will send women to you this year. God will send organizations to you this year to help you in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's a record here. <laughs> the Bible says that one of those days <laughs> that David stood, I was like, oh, like I do this often. He said, oh, how I wish I can just drink from the well in Jerusalem. He was longing for the water from that well in Jerusalem. He was just talking, you know. And I do it today. I'm like, oh, I wish I could just go back to Nigeria and eat shawarma. There's this special shawarma joint I like in Potako. I wish I could eat shawarma from there. Or I could eat suya from Buka Hot in Lekki. You know. And that's exactly what um, um, David did. And forgot about it. What he didn't know. Is that when he made that statement, three men from the midst of him, of the mighty men, and the rest 300, stepped out. They stepped out discreetly. Where are they going to? They are going to Jerusalem. Now, what the Bible tells us is that between where they are and Jerusalem, <laughs> where a garrison of soldiers, Philistine soldiers, their enemy, not a group of five, not a group of ten, not a group of hundred. <laughs> a garrison is almost like a legion. Between them and the desire of their master. Father, send me such men this year. In the name of Jesus. Huh. That will fulfill your counsel. That will be listening to you when you talk. And go and fulfill your desire. Such men are rare. Those men are, are sons. Call sons. Men are always listening when you talk. To see if they can decode any need. Any want. Any desire. Men that always go to your Amazon, Amazon wish list to see the things you've put in your wish list so they can fulfill it for you. Men that will be hunting for ways to assist you. Hey, in this year, 2022, God will send you sacrificial men because these three men put their lives on the line. Oh, you're not hearing me. God will send you men in this year, sons, daughters in this year that will execute your will. That will execute your desires in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. They hear, oh, you're thinking of planting a church here. They will go ahead of time. <laughs> they hear, oh, you have this in mind to do charity, to help the widows, to help the, the homeless, to help those that, that, that are not being fed well, whatever, they will go and bring it to pass. God will send you such people. In this year, 2022. In Jesus' name. Amen. The second three.
which is actually a group of two. The Bible says that the chief of them is Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Zuriah. The Bible says that he lifted up his spear against 300 and slew them and had a name among the three. God will send you leaders that will spearhead and conquer lands and conquer destinations and cities for the Lord on your behalf. God will send men that will bring to you the desires of your heart. On their own, they will take lands, they will take cities for the Lord in Jesus' name. The next one is Benaniah, the son of Jehoiada, was a violent man. The Bible says he slew two lion-like men of Moab. He went also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in the time of snow. In this year, 2022, God will send you fearless men. The next one, okay, is the same guy, Benaniah. He slew an Egyptian, a giant. God will send you giant killers. Men and women that will hear that you have this challenge, they will go behind your back and remove the challenge. Men and women that will hear that there's a mountain standing between you and something you want to achieve, they will go behind your back and level that mountain. If you believe that, shout a big amen. Amen. Glory be to God. So, what are the reasons, some of the reasons, why we lose our friends. I'm going to be a bit fast here now. What are some of the reasons? Why do we lose our friends? You know, you know when you start hitting 30, like I spoke to you on that on, on Sunday, please listen to the Sunday message. You will notice that they are becoming more focused. You know, because there are a lot of things now that you need to chase. You know, you are, you, are, you, are, you are now chasing your dreams, you have goals, you have things burning on your inside you want to achieve. You know, when those things start burning, it just says your focus starts shifting. You will notice you stop socializing as you used to. You stop partying as you used to. You stop hanging out as you used to because of this dream, because of this vision, because of this purpose. You are now affixed centered towards and driven towards achieving that goal at times you no longer have time to socialize as you used to you no longer have time to hang out as you used to and because of that you will notice that you start losing friends but one of the reasons i'm going to give you the first reason on my list is that when if you're a believer you decide to take your relationship with God serious. In fact, you don't lose friends. You change friends. I mean, there's a total sweeping of the old and, and the new comes. I'm telling you, it happened to me. When I decided after secondary school, as I get to the university, to Take my work with God serious. I noticed that all my friends just fizzled out. It was later I just noticed. I'm like, ah, where is this guy? Where is that guy? Oh, I've not heard from this guy for a long time. I've not spoken to this guy. When it happened, I didn't even know. I just noticed that our communication just disappeared. Just fizzled out. Why? You are chasing spirituality. You are chasing growth and maturity. You are not trying to get deeper into the work with God. The Bible says friendship with the word. I mean, the friendship with Christ cannot work with friendship with the word. I mean, are, light and darkness cannot associate. It's not, it's not possible. See what the Bible says in John chapter 15, verse 18 to 19. This is what Jesus told his disciples. They see. The world hates you. Remember that. See, the world hates you because it hated me first. See, the world would love you as one of its own if you belong to it. 
But once you decide to change, once you make that decision to chase God, they will hit you. And that exactly happened to me. Luke 14 verse 28 says, For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost? One of the costs of growth in Christ, of maturing in Christ, of becoming more like Jesus Christ, is that you will lose your friends. And it's worth losing. Believe me, it is worth losing. The second, like I said, I'm going to hurry. Is that when you step into the life chapter of self-discovery, I have this message that I call the seven chapters of life. When you step into the chapter of self-discovery, you are getting to know yourself now. This happens at times as a teenager or your early 20s. In fact, it should happen as a teenager. But if it doesn't, your late teens and your early 20s should not pass for you to discover who you are. Part of the things that go with this discovery is that you lose friends. Why do you lose friends? Because as you embark on that quest to know who you are, you get enlightened, you get informed on who you are. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when you get informed on who you are, it will affect the kind of friends that you keep. You will notice that these your friends of old cannot fit in in what you're seeing. They just can't fit in. Because just after this chapter of self-discovery is the chapter of self-actualization. When you know who you are, you know and find out and discover why you're here on earth, the next thing you do is to chase it. Is to chase your purpose. When you start chasing your purpose, you also lose friends. Because you realize that your purpose might not align with some of your friends, even your best friend. I lost my best friend in secondary school. When I decided, from secondary school, when I decided to chase my purpose. All of a sudden, just, it, I can't even explain what happened. This is my friend that we communicate every day, every weekend. I'm in his house, he's in my house. Our families know each other. We are that close. When I decided to chase God, just disappeared. The relationship just disappeared. So when you're busy chasing your visions, your goals, your purpose, you have little time. <laughs> little time for other things. And that is the truth. Vision chasing because it becomes more apparent what you're supposed to do. When you're not building that business, that career, that ministry, you have little time for frivolities. So it affects your social life. It affects your relationships. That is the truth. Don't worry, I'm going to balance it. Is it important for you to have a social life? Yes, it is. I'm going to balance it. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Another reason, okay, let me read the scripture on this. Matthew 19, verse 29. Jesus speaking said, And everyone who has left houses, brothers, sisters, father, mother, children, or lands, for my name's sake, will receive it a hundredfold. To the words of Christ. Jesus knows that when you start chasing him, when you start chasing for spiritual maturity, you will lose relationships. And he warned us in the Bible. And it is for good. You will gain them back. Oh yes, you will. Trust me. You will gain them back. That loss is for a while. Don't worry. I'm going to balance it. I'm going to balance it. So make sure you don't switch off. You don't disconnect or else you go with half information. And half knowledge is dangerous knowledge. Hallelujah. Increasing responsibilities also make you lose friends. As you grow, you get wiser. And that is the truth. The wiser you get, you start understanding, seeing through people, understanding people's motives. You will now know who is genuine and who is not genuine. <laughs> and that knowledge, that wisdom also affects your friendship. See what the Bible says in Proverbs 12, 13 verse 20. He who walks with wise men will be wise. So you look around your social circle and identify those that are wise and you notice that you start gravitating towards them. There's a pool you start experiencing towards the wise. All of a sudden, you see yourself withdrawing from the, <laughs> don't call them fools, 
from those that are not wise. You start withdrawing from them. They might be your friends. They might be members of your social circle. But all of a sudden, you notice that mm, our conversation doesn't flow anymore. We don't have any rallying points that we can sit and discuss things over. <clears throat> your, his, their perception and my perception of life now has changed. I know. And you have no choice than to move on. Then you will discover, another reason is that you discover that some friendship aren't worth it, worth it anymore because you've outgrown them. And this is the truth. Growth in this instance, see what I mean by growth in this instance? I don't mean you've outgrown them because you've made some money. I don't mean you've outgrown them because you have a better job than them. No, that's what I'm talking about. You've outgrown them. See what, exactly what I put down here. You've outgrown them because your worldview, perception, maturity level are no longer the same. No longer the same. If you keep hanging out with them, they will bring you to ruin. They brought King Rehoboam to ruin. Rehoboam had an opposition, a rebel, Jeroboam. And he went to his father's counselor. His father's counselor said, Ha, ah, Solomon was one of the wisest men on earth. So you can imagine the kind of counselors he had. But like, ha, ah, treat them kindly, do this, do this, bring them back so they will not, <laughs> will I say, dissolve the federation. He now went to his foolish friends. And they're like, What? Deal with them. Tell them that if your dad did not treat them well, that you will be worse. That you think them like a scorpion. Foolish friends. That's exactly what happened to Rehoboam. He was still hanging out with foolish friends. He has forgotten that now he's king. He's not prince. He's king. He didn't realize that he has now the responsibility. Not just for himself and his family. But a whole nation. A whole nation. He did not realize it. And he lost that opportunity to be a better king than his father was because of his connection with foolish friends. That he has outgrown, but he didn't know, based on his position as king. As king, he should have sat with his father's counselors, but he was still pulled down by the companion of fools that he kept. And what happened? He lost a fifth of the kingdom. They pulled away from him. And another thing is that you notice you start enjoying different things from your new friends you are making. And you realize that your tastes have changed. You want to hang out with these new friends because they are speaking the language of where you want to go to or where you are going to. And that is that you begin to realize that some of your friends are toxic. You know, Jim Rowe said something. He said that you average the five people you spend the most time with. The five people you spend the most time with. So when you hang out with toxic people, you become toxic. And the toxicity in you might ruin you. Ask something was hanging out with toxic Delilah. Delilah brought him to ruin. Ask Ammon, the son of David. He was hanging out with toxic Jehoram. Jehoram brought him to ruin. Check friends around you that are toxic and kick them out of your life. Quickly, advantages of losing friends. Old friends might be holding you back. That is the truth. They held back Rehoboam. They might be holding you back. Number two, you need to reduce over socialization and build deeper relationships. All the friends just hang out, party, just do crazy things. No, as you grow, as you grow, you need to start reducing those things and seek deeper relationship, heart to heart relationship. Start looking for friends that will stay closer than a brother. Very, very important. You need time to work on yourself. When you have made that self-discovery of who you are, you need to start making imputes, building up, studying, preparing for where you're going to. And as you do that, you will definitely have less time for socialization. 
Making new friends gives you a new perspective. Some of your friends live in the past while you are pressing towards the future. So it will be advantageous to leave those ones in the past, in the past, so you can press forward to greater things. So what should you prioritize? You must prioritize your relationship with God. Build that relationship and in that relationship, make sure you learn how to hear from God so he can guide you and direct you. He will open your eyes to see through friends, to know those that are genuine and those that are not. Number two, prioritize family. Very important. As you grow and expand, prioritize family. Then prioritize your dreams and your visions. Then prioritize genuine friends <laughs> against those that are not genuine. Then friends that speak the same language with you, prioritize them. Friends that will help you grow and achieve your purpose. Friends that will help you get to your destination. Prioritize them. Now, as I conclude, I'm sorry I had to rush. I'm going to, I wrote this down specifically so I can read it out. And here is the balance. You have a handful of friends. That's the truth. Genuine friends. They're not many. So you need to prioritize them. Prefer them. And as you do that, you know, I also want to let you know, I'm not saying you should abandon your friends or kick them out or stop talking to them. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that I'm trying to explain to you that as you grow and expand, you will notice that you will have less time for frivolities and friendship that will not amount to anything. So you need to understand it. Having friends is something every human being needs. It helps your emotional and it helps your mental health. So I'm, not, I'm, I'm by no means saying don't have friends. No, 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 no. You need people. You need companions. You need friends. God made man in such a way. So God made man a relational being. That is the truth. So you need friends. You need friends. You know, the Bible talks about a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I've quoted that before. Jesus told his disciples just before he went to heaven, you are no longer servants. You are now friends. That means that Jesus himself wanted friends, people he can trust, a circle of, of, of men around him because he needed them to further his purpose after he went to heaven. So having friends, very important, very important. Even though Jesus' friends faltered, abandoned him at Gethsemane and rode to the cross, when he resurrected, he went, sought after them, and they made up, they reconciled. Why? He needed those friends to further his purpose here on earth. Imagine if Paul, Peter went out fishing, dragged the others, and Jesus went to heaven. What do you think would have happened to this movement today? So you need people. You need people. No man is an island. You need people. Never, don't be too proud to think you're an island. Identify the ones around you that truly and genuinely loved you. That are in need for your well-being. That look after your well-being. They are not your friends because of what they can get. Prioritize those ones. Take note of them. Take note of them. And maintain that relationship. It takes work to maintain relationships. That's the truth. Put in the work. Hallelujah. I don't know if you've learned something. If you did, please leave a comment. So I will read it later. If you something you heard that will help you. I'm looking forward to reading from you. Join me on Sunday. I'm going to talk to you about growth and start preparing you for growth. This year is a year of growth and expansion. And God is bringing it to us, to Activate Church, to every member of this commission. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. In this year, you excel. You'll be in the forefront. You'll be above. You will not be sick. You will not lack. 
you are protected. No harm can come near you. The desires of your heart will find you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have an offering, it's time to give it. The details are on the screen. But I bless the givers. Increase them. Increase them. Touch, O oh Lord, their hearts and their minds. You know the thoughts of our hearts. I ask you, Lord, fulfill their desires, wipe their tears this year. Let them acquire speed. Do for them what they could not do for themselves for years. Compress this year. Let it be like three, four, five, six, seven years in one for them. Things will happen. Miracles will happen back to back for them in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to see you on Sunday. But remember our 10-day prayer meeting and fasting is continuing tomorrow on Zoom. Make sure you join us by 8 p.m. Our 10-day prophetic commanding of 2022. Don't miss out in Jesus' name. Amen. Go succeed. Go prosper. For God is with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.